So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this session. Today, we are going to work through the concepts, techniques, and procedures of web, web app builder development for uh, mobile. So Yiwei Yi Ma is uh, my colleague here. He has been designing and developing web applications for six years now. He has joined the Web App Builder team uh, this year. Before that, he was an UI engineer in a different team doing UI works for projects. Some of his work related to Web App Builder includes the launch passing and the add data widget. And my name is Kevin Gao. I'm uh, a UI engineer uh, from professional services at ASRI. So similar to Yiwei, I'm also focusing on the UI design and front-end development for web applications. Yiwei and I have been uh, working on the web app builder since its early release. And today, what we are really going to focus is the scene concept in web app builder. Because the scene is what web app builder uses to create different kinds of applications. In this one hour session, we are going to work through what a scene is, what are the existing out of box uh, scenes in Web App Builder, what compose a scene, how mobile is handled or can be handled by the scene, and the steps to create a mobile view by yourself. So here is the definition of what a scene in uh, Web App Builder is. It is a template framework representing the look and feel of an application. This means a scene defines the UI components, the layout, the stylings, the brandings, and the other UI-related aspects of the applications, such as the interactions of a specific UI element and the workflow in the app in general. And uh, it's always important to remember that a scene is responsible for handling the experience in both desktop and mobile views. So let's talk about the out-of-box uh, out scenes. So by now, the latest Web App Builder developed version 2.7 has nine out-of-box scenes. And the latest one is the dashboard scene, which, which, which is kind of cool, uh, in my opinion. Um, other, uh, uh, different from the other out-of-box scenes, it is less map dominant. So it provides a good use cases when you want to show multiple source of information visualization. So back to our topic of out-of-box scenes, each scene has a different layout, a preset of UI components or widget, and different styles to choose from to define the look and feel of your application. So all out-of-box scenes are, out, are optimized for mobile. Each scene has extra code written to handle the UI when an app turns into the mobile. So let's take Launchpad scene, for example, and see how it interprets the UI in the mobile view. So firstly, the position of certain UI elements are relocated for better user experience in the mobile. Uh, for example, the zoom, home, and locate buttons are moved from the top right uh, top left corner to the bottom left so that it's easier for users finger to tap and to tap those actionable items secondly some of the ui elements are hidden on the header you might notice the logo title are hidden and only the link drop down is shown and it is changed from black to white to match the color styles and uh, also, the scale bar and coordinate widgets is, are hidden in uh, a mobile view. Certainly, some of the panel behavior also gets changed. On the desktop view, multiple widgets from the anchor bar at the bottom can be displayed at the same time. And also, the panel can be resized and dragged around on the screen. However, in the mobile view, only one panel, uh, only one panel can be shown and it occupies half of the screen. So if we dive deeper, we might find more difference between the desktop view and mobile view in the launchpad scene. And uh, it, uh, it, is a good re it serves as a good reference uh, for designers and developers to, uh, to think about when they create a new custom mobile scene. 
So all the out of box scene takes care of the mobile view for users. When users choose a scene or create an application, they don't have to worry about whether the app can run nicely on a mobile app. But what about a custom one? So the answer is it is designers and developers' responsibility to provide a mobile experience for custom themes. Because all the out of box themes have mobile support kind of already cooked in, that might give users uh, the impression that Web App Builder uh, scene handles mobile by itself. It's kind of true for the general users, but for designers and developers, we have to do the design and development work to make this happen from scratch. Next, we are going to introduce the four components in a Web App Builder scene. By knowing what each component is, we will have a better understanding of how Web App Builder kind of defines and controls the UI behavior of an app in general. And thus, we can understand how we should add extra code and uh, functionalities to those components to make a mobile experience happening. So the four major components are layout, panel, style, and controller. Starting from layout, it is, it is a configuration that includes a list of uh, preset UI components, including the header and also the widgets on the header, which are represented by the white circles, the map, the on-screen widgets, like the zoom, home, locate buttons, and also the widget placeholders. They usually look like the gray transparent box with numbers starting from one to three. Also the panels, which are used to display the widgets. So inside the configuration of each individual widget, so we can define the position properties such as top, left, and Z index, as well as the size property such as the width and height. The second component is panel. A panel is basically a container to display in-panel widgets. And uh, on the other hand, the in-panel widgets can be displayed directly, but it, in this case, it needs to be wrapped within a container. Panels can be different regarding their UI behaviors, so some can be collapsed, expanded, closed, and some can be dragged around and repositioned on the screen. So uh, let's take example from the foldable scene. So the foldable scene has two panels. One is the foldable panel, which usually uh, located under the header, either on the bottom side, or uh, either on the left side or the right side. The other one is the dockable panel, so it is expanded uh, under the widget icon. So both of the panels are capable of displaying a widget. The third component is a style. The style defines the look and feel of the application. So the most common use cases for changing style is to change the app according to your company or the corporate brand colors. So you can change the color of the header, the sidebar, the panels, and the other common UI elements. Because style is basically one or multiple CSS files, designers and developers uh, is, can add as much CSS code as possible. Um, so the complexity of the styles can be dramatically different from one scene to another. So if you are creating a scene uh, for a mobile view, I would expect the styles component gets pretty long because of the mobile specific CSS. So the last one is the controller. I would think about the controller as the brain of the whole app. It drives the app's navigation and defines how the app get closed and opened and communicated with each other. So basically, it controls how the app behaves in general. Uh, technical side, a controller is another web app builder widget. A common, com a common controller displays the app's logo, uh, the title, the user login, and also the widget icon defines in the widget pool section in the layout configuration.
As I have mentioned before, each of these four components is capable of providing extra mobile-specific configurations and functionalities to together de deliver a complete mobile experience. So now we can dive deeper inside the details of how to develop for mobile in Web App Builder. So let's welcome Eway to share his thoughts on this. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so welcome. Uh, so now it's my turn to to show the details on uh, how to develop, uh, actually do development for uh, uh, mobile uh, for mo uh, for Web App Builder. And uh, before I actually start, uh, I would like to know how many of you attended my workshop yesterday. Uh, Want to have a okay? Oh, okay, only one person. And then how many of you attended my session last year? Okay, then, okay, that's that's perfect. So uh, because there are, there will be uh, some overlapping uh, of the slides. Uh, and by the way, uh, today uh, I'm like we are we are showing the the mobile development. Um, and tomorrow there will be another session that will be showing uh, the web builder theme uh, in general. So so feel free to attend uh, that session also. Okay. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so the first is uh, how actually Web App Builder knows uh, it is uh, in the mobile view. Um, okay. So uh, in Web App Builder's uh, framework, Jimu, uh, uh, let me ask you guys another question again. Uh, how many of you actually have done some development work uh, for Web App Builder, like creating widgets? Okay, perfect. So you probably have already familiar uh, with the the, the gym framework. Uh, so the gym framework uh, uh, in the background it sets like a viewport uh, size a thres threshold to determine whether the app enters into the mobile view or not, and uh, that uh, uh, that def default threshold is. is um, is one the the screens uh, width or height is than, is less than 600 pixels, and this number is actually stored uh, inside of the inside of a global variable called window config breakpoints. It is an array. Uh, by default, it has two children. Uh, the first one is the the breakpoint for for mobile, and the second one is for for desktop, uh, just uh, for your information. And uh, by default, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, for example, um, the Launchpad theme it uses the default uh, breakpoint, uh, which is 600 pixel. And uh, the and the the foldable theme uh, it can sets uh, this. This, this number, it can reset that number to a, to a different one. Okay. All right. Uh, so there are about three uh, key configuration or properties uh, when the app is in the mobile mode. Uh, I suggest you guys to rem remember these uh, three ones. So they are the key uh, Key features that you can utilize of when you're doing a development for mobile. Um, so the first one is uh, in the in the layout configuration. So when the app enters into the the, the mobile view, the properties defined in the uh, in the mobile layout section uh, inside of the layout configuration uh, will be applied. Uh, in the layout configuration, uh, the mobile layout is an optional, uh, very specific settings uh, for uh, for mobile. Uh, so when the map, when the app is uh, within the mobile view, uh, the settings of the UI elements, for example, um, like 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 the header controller uh, or the panel uh, panel, might be a good example. Uh, like in the football theme, uh, when it Enters into the mobile view, the panel uh, location is a little bit different. So that difference uh, is set actually uh, within that mobile layout uh, section uh, in the layout configuration, uh, if that makes sense right now. 
And uh, the second one is an extra class name, uh, which is called gmu dash is mobile, uh, which will be added to the gmu dash layout uh, dash manager uh, DOM node. Uh, by the way, this uh, gmu dash layout dash manager node uh, is the HTML is the H HTML root uh, element of the whole app. So uh, with this class name uh, added, de designers or developers, they can utilize uh, this class to write uh, specific CSS rules uh, to override any default CSS uh, styles defined for the, for the normal desktop view. Uh, so uh, if you guys have any uh, like uh, CSS experience, you, you probably know what I'm talking about right now. And uh, you, and you, you can always use uh, CSS media queries to create um, uh, responsive uh, CSS rules also. And then the last uh, property, which is an app-wide property uh, called app info that is run in mobile. Uh, so uh, within the, uh, when the app is in the, in the mobile view, this property is turned to true. Uh, using this property, we can add conditional JavaScript code uh, to define uh, mobile specific uh, interactions or behaviors or logics uh, uh, within widgets such as controllers or any other kind of uh, widgets. Uh, okay, uh, so these are the configurations and the properties uh, provided by the Web App Builder itself. And then right now I'm, I'm going to quickly use the foldable theme to show uh, these three concepts. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, the, okay, never, never mind. It's, it, it's kind of slow to, to switch to, uh, to my desktop. Right, so what I'm, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open uh, a foldable theme, uh, an app that is made um, using the foldable theme. Okay. So first, um, uh, let's, let's see the, the layout. Okay. Yeah, I should have already have it opened. Layout default. Oh, there we go. Um, so I can clap these ones. Like, um, I'm not sure how many of you have kind of uh, already looked into the different layout settings uh, uh, in the code. Uh, these are the four like uh, components uh, within a typical layout uh, configuration file. So the widgets on screen, uh, these are the on-screen widgets such as the the the, the foldable themes uh, header controller on top. Uh, the scale bar, the search, uh, like all those uh, on-screen widgets, they are sitting on top of the map. And uh, these uh, widget uh, uh, placeholders that you can add your own widgets too, like those are like numbered one, two, three, four, five, and, uh, and as such. And uh, at the very last part of the configuration, we can see uh, there is a section called mobile layout. Um, this is the, the, the mobile specific layout that will be applied to the whole app. Uh, so what the foldable theme does is when the app enters into the mobile view, it's going to read the, the properties, like the, the positions from, from this section and uh, apply the, uh, the position change uh, to these two widgets, okay? We need that right here. So that's why when we uh, switch to a uh, mobile view, Hold on a minute. I uh, forgot the name of the, the widgets. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you'll see the, like, the difference uh, the, that have been applied uh, to the layout itself. And uh, the second one will be the, the, the class name. 
um, if we uh, open the developer tool and uh, go to the go to this uh, I'm not sure if you guys can actually see it. Hold on a minute. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, you can actually see there's a, an extra class name added to the root level of the of the HTML uh, structure. And then the third one is the the is run in mobile. So let's try window dot app info that is run in mobile. So this property should be true. Okay, that's it. All right, so that's uh, those three uh, different uh, configuration properties that handle the mobile view uh, in Web Builder. And let's go back to the slides. Taking like forever. Okay, here we go. Okay, um, next uh, we are actually going to dive deeper uh, uh, into, uh, because uh, Kevin introduced the four major components uh, that um, make up a, a web builder theme, like the layout, the controller, the style, and uh, uh, where's another one? I forgot. Yeah, I like uh, th those four ones. And we are going to use a launchpad theme and a and uh, break up the the, the mobile the, the changes for mobile and uh, categorize those into the four major components to see how this theme handles uh, uh, the, the 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 mobile UI. Okay. All right. So first is the layout. Um, uh, on the left of the screen, you can see uh, uh, in the desktop view. Uh, uh, those uh, these uh, UI elements are uh, they have their own kind of uh, positions, like the header is on the top left, and on top of it there's the search uh, widget, and then beneath it there will be the the, the default uh, on-screen widgets like the zoom slider, home button, locate button, and uh, the same thing for the the widget placeholders, and uh, and that is the I forgot the name of that. That widget, um, and it, at, at the bottom there's another controller, which is the anchor bar controller that reads the the widget uh, configuration from the widget pool in the layout, and it display them as icons uh, in the uh, in this controller widget. And uh, on the right, uh, we can see the layout uh, they have been changed. Uh, like the 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 header controller, which uh, was the the dark uh, dark bar on the top, it, right now it it is positioned positioned to the to the top right as as a only as a button. So the logo and the titles they they have been hidden, and that part is uh, that part is actually handled by the CSS, uh, which is not handled by the layout. And the same thing for the for the other on-screen buttons, like the zoom slider, home, locate buttons. They move to the bottom right. The widget, the widgets, they, uh, the the widget placeholders, they have been moved to the bottom bottom right. And the, the same thing for the attribute table. And uh, the and the um, the anchor bar controller. At the bottom, right now it is uh, it is it is still at the bottom of the screen, but the width of it has actually changed uh, to take the full width of the of the of the app. Uh, still, I'm not sure whether you guys can see this or not. But basically, this is the 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 JSON code for for the for the changes I have just mentioned. And the same thing here too. So these um, <clears throat> these are the ones that uh, these are the the changes for for the on-screen widgets. Okay. Okay. Next one is the panel. Um, uh, by default, in the desktop view, uh, in launchpad theme, um, 
uh, multiple panels can be displayed at the same time. Uh, but in the mobile view, uh, only one panel can be, can be displayed. And uh, another difference is uh, in the desktop view, a panel can be dragged and uh, it has a default uh, size that is set. Uh, but in the mobile view, uh, that the draggable feature has been removed and uh, it has a fixed position. It is positioned at the bottom uh, half of the screen and uh, it takes up uh, half of the screen size. Okay, so here's how the JavaScript um, uh, uh, inside of the panel uh, that, that applies these changes. So there's a method uh, in the panel's uh, JavaScript file which is called set position. And uh, within this method, first uh, it checks uh, whether the the, the global variable window dot app info that is running in mobile is true. If it is true, which means the app is already running uh, in mobile, then it does these uh, position changes uh, to the to the panel itself. So basically, uh, this uh, this position position change uh, is is actually done within JavaScript. Uh, uh, people might think uh, the change uh, should be done uh, within the layout uh, configuration, but actually uh, it's not. Uh, the layout configuration it only handles uh, position changes for for the widgets, and the panel is not part of that. So any position changes has to be done within uh, JavaScript uh, by utilizing this uh, app info that is running in mobile variable. Okay. And then we come to the style, which is actually actually the CSS. Um, something to mention here: uh, the style uh, within uh, Web Builder actually contains uh, one or multiple CSS files. It's basically the uh, the, the CSS part um, of the app. Okay. So uh, here we are using the search widget uh, in the Launchpad theme to see the differences. Uh, first, uh, uh, the search widget uh, uh, in a desktop view, it has uh, like uh, the, the rounded corners and uh, it doesn't have a box shadow applied. Uh, but within uh, a mobile view, you can see the, the border radius, they have been uh, removed. And, and uh, there, there is a box, sh box shadow that has been applied to make it look consistent. As other, let me go back, like, like to make it look uh, like the other on-screen widgets. Uh, here they are the, the, the white circles over here. Because these white circles, they all have, um, they all have box shadows. So to make it look the same, uh, we also apply a box shadow to it. And uh, how Launchpad does it is it is defined uh, in, the, uh, in a CSS file called launchpad, launchpad.css. Um, and this, uh, this launchpad.css is uh, referenced uh, within the style.css. And uh, within uh, this file, you can actually find the over, uh, overriding uh, styles uh, for the for the search widget, uh, the first uh, section is to to apply a box shadow uh, for the widget search, and the second section is actually to remove the border radiuses uh, from the the, the the widget. And uh, by the way, if you can tell uh, here, it is now using the is dash. Uh, uh, it's now using the gmu dash is mobile uh, class name. This is because uh, Launchpad, uh, I mean, uh, Launchpad theme was the first one, uh, the first theme that applies uh, a mobile specific class uh, uh, to, uh, to the to the to apps uh, uh, root node. And after that, uh, gmu adds the, the gmu dash uh, is mobile. 
So here, the Launchpad theme is still utilizing this is mobile class to, to, to add a mobile specific CSS uh, styles. Okay. All right, so before I actually get into the, the demo, uh, I would like to mention, uh, I, I, would like, I, I would like to spend a few minutes uh, talking about the underlying UI frameworks uh, used uh, by Web by Builder. Uh, because this is very helpful to understand how the UI of Web by Builder apps are constructed constructed. And it will give you a good idea of how to override CSS um, uh, for the exist existing UI elements uh, if you want to do a very uh, deep uh, UI customization. OK, so here's a graph um, uh, that's showing the, the three major frameworks. So the white circle. Uh, the, the biggest web circle represents the Web Builder UI, and it contains some of the UI elements from first uh, the Dojo digits, and uh, some of the widgets from RJS API, and it also has its own UI elements uh, from Web Builder's own GMU UI library. So first, uh, the Dojo digits, it provides uh, uh, the, the, the Dojo framework it provides uh, basic digits, digits such as form elements, uh, layout digits such as tabs or accordions, and uh, dialogues. And uh, next one is the RJS API. It basically, it basically provides all the widgets that are related to, to the map. And the, lo uh, the last one is the GMU uh, framework. Uh, the GMU framework uh, is Web App Builder's own UI library. Uh, it provides a class framework. Uh, uh, if you have done any um, like a UI, UI work for customizing Web App Builder, you might be familiar with some of those, such as the GMU-main.background. That's one uh, most popular class from that framework. So it, is a, so it is a set of classes. And uh, the purpose of these classes are to design and create visual consist consistency across the app. And uh, uh, the GMU library also uh, provides a set of uh, very basic UI elements, such as buttons, dropdowns, or, or models, and uh, et cetera. And most of these UI elements, they are actually used by the Web Builder editor itself. So uh, within the themes, uh, not, not, not many of these uh, UI elements uh, are actually used. OK. And the uh, next one is, uh, is yet another different graph uh, to show the relationships of these um, different uh, frameworks uh, together with with Web App Builder's theme. Uh, this graph also shows the, over, the, the overriding uh, order. So the, at the very bottom is the Dojo digits. Um, uh, in Web App Builder or just API, um, the, the default class, uh, uh, the default theme from Dojo is the Claro. I'm not sure whether you guys like Claro theme or not, but that's the, the default one that we use. So and on top of the Dojo framework, we have the Arch, ArcGIS API for JavaScript, okay, uh, which are the, uh, the, the, all the mapping widgets. And uh, those uh, styles are defined within the S3.CSS. Okay. And uh, on top of, the, of these two, uh, we have the GMU framework, like the GMU-CSS, GMU-override.CSS. And uh, on top of, of these, uh, these frameworks, then we have the Web Builder theme. A, a theme contains uh, two major files. The first one is the common.css. And the second one is the style.css from each style folder. So the overriding order is Dojo at the bottom, then we have the S3.CSS, then we have the 
uh, the, the sets files from Jimu, and then on top of that, we have the theme, and then the, the theme has the power to override any UI elements uh, defined within the underlying uh, three uh, frameworks. Okay. All right, then we have the controllers uh, in Launchpad. Uh, let's see how uh, Launchpad theme in mobile mode um, handles the changes for these two controllers. Okay. First, uh, in the mobile view, the header controller, which is the one on top again, is minimized to only display the link drop down button. Uh, by setting the visibility of other UI elements to hidden, such as the logo and the titles. So from this, uh, from this uh, CSS code, you can see uh, it is utilizing that mobile only class name to override uh, the, the, the default styles. And uh, there are additional CSS styles to make the links drop down look like the other map, control, map controls, such as the zoom slider home, like those circle ones, uh, which appears as, <clears throat> uh, which to make, to make that header look consistent with the other on-screen uh, widget icons. Right. And, uh, then we have the anchor bar controller at the bottom. As I mentioned uh, before, uh, the controller is positioned at the bottom of the screen, and uh, it takes uh, the full width of the screen. Uh, this is defined in the mobile layout section of the layout config. So if you take a look at the, the code again, uh, we can see the, uh, here's the, the pos pos position override. Okay, so it sets the, the bottom to zero, gives a, a height of 40 pixels, and then the width is changed to 100%. Okay. And uh, there is also another change worth mentioning over here is um, uh, in the mobile view, view uh, if the widget icons uh, exist the, the, the maximum uh, number, uh, any, like, any more uh, widget icons will be wrapped within this green uh, button. And when you click on it, a dialog will show up and, uh, and display any extra widget icons uh, within that dialog. And uh, uh, this behavior is actually handled uh, only in mobile. Okay. Because uh, if you remember, uh, in the desktop view, there are two arrows uh, uh, on the anchor bar controller like the left arrow and the right arrow, those arrows are other controllers too, or the buttons to, 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 to rotate the, the widget, like to, to, to switch between a different sets of, uh, of the widget icons. And uh, this mobile change, this green icon, uh, it is actually uh, defined in, in the anchor bar controllers JavaScript, utilizing that uh, App info that is running in mobile. Okay. All right. So now it's the time to to actually get into uh, for me to do a demo, uh, which is to create a custom uh, mobile UI for an existing thing. Uh, the reason I asked you before. Uh, like whether you, you guys have attended my session last year or not is because last year's session, I showed uh, steps to create this theme on the left. And uh, because, uh, because of the time limit, uh, I didn't have time to actually uh, add uh, any code to make this theme work uh, in mobile. So that's why I have this session this year to, to show the extra steps to, to make this theme, uh, to, to add the mobile view uh, for this theme. Uh, before I get into the extra steps, I'm going to show the, the lab app first.
right. So here's the, the theme without the, the mobile, mobile UI applied. OK. So what, what it basically does is um, it has, uh, by the way, this theme does not exist in the existing uh, out-of-box uh, themes. It, it is something made by myself only for the demo purpose. And uh, from the UI, uh, there's a controller on the left. Uh, I call it a sidebar controller. What it does is it basically displays the, the, logo, the logo of the app and uh, also the user information, uh, like the user's thumbnail at the bottom. And uh, most importantly, it displays a list of widget icons uh, uh, in the controller. And when you click one icon, a panel will show next to it. So this whole section uh, is the, the panel itself. The, the panel is, is very simple and it's taken from uh, an existing theme, which, which is called uh, the simple border panel. What it does is basically only displays uh, the, the name of the selected widget and also show the content of the selected widget. Okay? And uh, by default, uh, there, always will be, uh, there will always be one widget selected. So if you don't have if you don't have any widgets that that is set to uh, that doesn't have the is property what's called uh, the the, the op open at start property set to true it will pick the first uh, widget and open it so there will there will be always one uh, one widget selected and we have a, a couple of very simple on screen widgets um, on the map. And that's it. And if we uh, enter the mobile view, this is what we got, right? So basically, it's un unusable. This is not really designed for, for, for a mobile uh, interface. So what we really want to achieve is this one. So, so I'm going to show a demo to, to add extra code for the four major components uh, to, to to make this view into this view, okay? So you can tell uh, there, were, there, there are like major differences over here. So if you click, I'm sorry, let me refresh again. Um, so the header is kind of moved to the top. Give me one second. Yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, this is the theme that, that we are going to achieve. So when you click on that, the, the widget will be uh, sitting uh, in this uh, sidebar menu. And when you click, the panel will show up and then that will, uh, it will occupy the whole, whole screen. All right, let's go back to the slides. So as I mentioned before, um, there are there are a couple of major changes uh, that apply to this uh, mobile view. The first one is the the controller. So the sidebar controller that will uh, that will display as a horizontal header at the top of the of the app, and then the list of the widget icons are going to be wrapped uh, in a sidebar menu, um, which is a separate div. And when the app loads, the menu will be initially hidden. So you won't see those uh, widgets, uh, widget icons. And uh, there will be a new menu icon added to the header. So when you click on it, it will show the menu uh, of the widgets. And uh, un unlike the, the, dis uh, the, the desktop view, uh, it does not require at least one widget to be opened.
Okay. And another major change is uh, for the panel. So uh, in the mobile view, the, the panel will always uh, take full screen. And uh, on top of that, we are going to add a, a close button uh, to the inter uh, user in interface to make it uh, closable. So first, uh, first step is to update the, the layout. So, uh, so we are going to add the mobile layout at the end of the layout configuration be because uh, the original theme doesn't have uh, the, any mobile support. So the first step is to, to add this uh, mobile layout uh, section to the, to the layout config. And within it, we added the widget on screen and the map attributes uh, because these are the, the components of, that we are going to change. Uh, okay. And here's the code that, that will be applied uh, to, the, to the layout. Uh, let's use the, the controller as an example. So the sidebar controller widget over here uh, is going to have a new position. Uh, the difference here is that uh, the right uh, attribute in the position is set to zero, so it's going to stretch the, the, the UI to take the, the full width. And we give it a fixed height, which is 110 pixels, which will achieve this, uh, this layout. Let's see, so uh, it's going to look like, like this uh, in the, uh, after we apply the layout change. And the step two is, uh, is for the controller widget itself. Okay. So uh, what we are going to make the change to the controller in mobile view is uh, first we are going to add a uh, uh, we are going to add a JavaScript to, to make it to not require at least one widget to be opened. And we are going to add a menu toggle icon uh, that will only appear in mobile view to, to toggle on and off the menu, um, that, that the menu uh, dialog. So first, uh, we are going to update the HTML uh, template. Here we can see, uh, I'm, uh, I added a toggle button uh, to the HTML template of the controller widget, uh, which is uh, over here. And also I added another uh, div uh, for the menu, which will contain all the widget icons. Next one is to update the widget.js for the controller. Um, so here again, we can see uh, it is also, a, it is uh, using the app info that is run in mobile property again to check whether, uh, whether the, the app is in the mobile view, then it applies these changes. So what, this, uh, what this uh, code does is to, to not let the controller to display the first widget from the widget pool when the app loads. And then, we added a, a mobile specific CSS rules uh, for the extra UI components we just added. Uh, okay. And after those changes, uh, this, this is what we get. Okay, so the, the panel is, is initially turned off and then we have this kind of, kind of nice looking controller uh, defined. And uh, here is the, the JavaScript code. Well, it's, good. it's a little bit off. Uh, here's uh, the logic uh, to toggle the menu in, uh, in controllers widget.js. And uh, uh, if I, by the way, I'm going to uh, share my, my code base on GeoNet. So after the session, you can um, go there and feel free to download the source code so you can actually read these other details on this code. So basically what, what this code does is to, uh, to attach an on-click event uh, to the toggle button and uh, to show or hide uh, that, that menu uh, dialog which contains all the widget icons. Okay. 
And then again, we add more uh, CSS rules to style that menu item. And then after that, we are going to have this. So uh, they're kind of uh, sticking together. Uh, on the left is the controller that doesn't have the menu opened. Uh, to the right is uh, like when you click the, the menu button, uh, the, the, the side bar shows up over here. Another step three is, uh, is, a, is to make changes to the panel widget. So basically what we do first is we are going to add uh, uh, overrides to, to make the, the panel full screen. There are two uh, methods. The method one is using CSS. Uh, we can write, uh, we can utilize this gmail dash is mobile class name to, to define mobile specific uh, uh, location for, for this panel. But uh, that requires using the, the important statement, which is not really uh, recommended. The method two is using JavaScript, which is uh, the, the screenshot at the bottom over here. And the, the next step is to update the, the panel's uh, HTML, HTML template to add the close button. Here we add the, the close button to the HTML, uh, uh, to add the close button to, to, the, to the panel. And, then, and then next we attach the onclick event to the button and uh, add one line of logic to close the, the, the panel when the button is clicked. So basically what it does is, is, is using the out of box panel manager that close panel method to close it. And uh, here are just some minor uh, additional changes. First is to add the close button uh, image uh, to, to, the, to the panel widget. Uh, the second part is to add supporting uh, CSS to style the, the, the close button. And after that, the panel will look like this. It will have a close button and it will take the, the full screen of the, of the app. And the last step is style, which is the CSS, All right? Um, so I did something additional to, to, to uh, I made some uh, mobile specific uh, changes. The first one is to remove the border radius from the search widget, which, which is similar to, to the launchpad, launchpad theme. So this whole, this, this uh, section of the code is basically doing that. And uh, I also add a, a, a few more lines of code to, to overwrite the, the mobile pop-up on the map to make it look something different. So this is the pop-up. On the left, it is using the default style from Asri's um, uh, theme, which is uh, the, the Asri.css file. And to the right, uh, uh, I, I restyle this uh, map pop-up and make it something look like this at the bottom. Okay. And then basically, that's it. Um, I can show, let me show the, the interaction of the end result real quick. So we have the panel and uh, here's the, the pop up to the right. So basically uh, we can just again utilize those three uh, key uh, properties or configurations to make any changes, changes that we want. Okay, and uh, I think that's it. Uh, the demo was kind of a little bit in a rush, so if, if you want, uh, you can um, uh, either join my session tomorrow to see the detailed steps of creating a Web Builder theme, or you can come to my booth uh, for this whole week for, for any questions on anything Web Builder. And thank you very much. Any questions? No. Okay. 
uh, I want to mention one thing before any question. Uh, so uh, if you if if you happen to have the the Asterisk Events app uh, on your phone, uh, under my sessions page, uh, there's uh, there's uh, like a survey. So feel free to to make any comments on, on that. All right. So now it's the the question Q and A time. Jerry Semblet, I'm a developer for Eagle in New Zealand. Actually, the answer is yes now I think about it. But the question was, is it also possible to use CSS media queries as well as the, the stuff to, for instance, do a theme for mobile when it's in a landscape or portrait? Or yeah, yeah. Have, uh, have more fine control over how you display the, the map on different Yeah, um, for media queries, definitely you can use that. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, I think actually I mentioned that uh, in one of the slides uh, because think about Web App Builder theme or app, uh, there are pretty much no difference from any other web apps uh, made using HTML and JavaScript, right? So basically anything that applied to a normal uh, JavaScript app uh, can apply over here. So definitely. Uh, that's also true for using media queries. Does that answer the question? Can you, can you disable the, the, the behavior where it tells you it's going to mobile and, and rely entirely on media queries? Oh, yeah. So what you, what you can do is basically just to, um, uh, so by the way, are you talking about creating a new theme or modifying existing themes? Both? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for creating new themes, uh, what you can do is basically you can just ignore those uh, settings. Right, right. So you, you can just uh, forget about using the, the, the extra class name added to, the, to that root uh, element. And for modifying existing um, themes, what you can do is remember that breakpoints, that the, so there, you can actually reset the, the breakpoints. That by default, uh, the the mobile the mobile breakpoint is set to 600 pixels wide, and uh, you can definitely go ahead and modify that number to something like 2,000, whatever. In that case, it's not it, you probably never enter into a mobile view, unless it's like a 4K TV or something. Okay. Does anyone have a question? It seems like it would always be best to modify an existing theme rather than jumping into customizing one. What would, what would be a good case for customizing one rather than modifying? Uh, actually, I'm going to cover that tomorrow, but I can uh, tell a little bit uh, on that. It really depends on requirements, because right now we have like nine different themes. Uh, most of the time, uh, when I create a, a custom theme, I'm not really doing like creating a new one unless uh, uh, like, like uh, I cannot find any existi existing theme that meet the requirements. So because creating a new one, it will take a lot of time to, to, to do. So, so, so my re recommendation is to modify from an existing theme first. If, if that doesn't work out, then you can try to create a new one. Uh, the purpose of today's session and also tomorrow's session is basically give you a whole idea of probably like the worst scenario, scenario that, that you have to create a, a new one, uh, like a new theme from scratch. But most of the case, you don't have to. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to show uh, like the different, uh, like different efforts of uh, creating, uh, like of doing different uh, UI customization uh, with Web App Builder. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that there are four or five style sheets because you have uh, the mobile mm -hmm. app have four levels. So do I have to include all of, all of those uh, CSS style file in the head? Uh, 
uh, which theme are you talking about? The, the presentation you mentioned. Uh, I just saw there is a, uh, you list common CSS uh, and okay. the June. Uh, okay, got it. So those are, so within a theme, there will always be a file called common.css. Uh, within that file is, uh, basically what that file does is it defines all the, uh, the, the basic overrides. Uh, some of the themes, it basically does nothing. Uh, but what you can do with that file is to write any overriding CSS rules within that file, such as overriding any of the UI elements uh, from, for example, Dojo framework, or importing uh, any third-party CSS. You can all, you can all do it uh, within the common CSS. The reason why is uh, the common CSS applies to the whole theme, no matter, no matter which style is selected. Uh, so it is basically a theme of wide uh, CSS. But for style of CSS, it, it is different. So when you pick a, a different style, a different style of CSS will be selected. Right? So a style of CSS uh, is, is most uh, used for changing branding uh, colors, uh, fonts like that. So styles, as a name, uh, it, it is telling it is uh, changing, basically the the color th schemes or the branding of an app. And uh, also, I'm going to cover that tomorrow. Okay. Okay. And if you still have, it's sometimes it's kind of hard to explain without uh, giving any uh, examples. If you still have questions, you can come to the to the booth, the Web Builder booth, and find me. I can show you some uh, copies to uh, for that. Is okay? Okay. Yeah. Right. So I've seen gentlemen here. So I just want to mention uh, it's already 3:30. So feel free to leave. But uh, you are welcome to ask questions. Okay. Uh, I think we could. We still have like about uh, 10 minutes before before next session. Uh, one quick question. Are yeah. y'all going to look at adding on a tablet uh, layout in addition to the mobile more for the phone? And what would the breakpoints be if y'all did move to the tablet? Uh, for the tabular layout? Uh -huh. uh, okay. Uh, again, you can utilize that breakpoints. Uh, so. Uh, so basically what you do is when the app loads, or even in the JavaScript that you can, uh, uh, when the app loads, you set, uh, you overwrite that breakpoint variable. So by default, it's 600 and uh, one, one thousand, uh, like 1,280. So that 1,280 is for like, kind of like desktop. So you can either change one of those or you can add your own. For example, for iPad, it's probably going to be 960 pixels. You can insert that, and then start from there. You can add your customized JavaScript, JavaScript code to, uh, to target uh, iPad. OK. Cool. Another one? Yep. So, uh, for uh, mobile, obviously, performance is an important factor. Mm -hmm. So if you have average or poor bandwidth, um, how does the, let's say a simple application that could be built either with Web App Builder or from scratch from JavaScript API, how would they compare? Um, do you have, uh, I know the JavaScript API um, folks would say do a custom build or something like that. Do you have something equivalent? Uh, or any metrics on that um, topic? Yeah, for that, I don't know. Uh, this, I think it's more like a question for the JavaScript API person uh, from, from that team or some, some other, uh, some people from the, the server or like backend. Uh, for that, I, I don't really know, so I don't want to just quickly give you an answer uh, on that. But I can point, point you to, to somebody. Uh, 
Yeah, that's that is interesting because uh, like we actually we don't really do any uh, optimization right now for 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 that, but definitely that is something that we plan to do uh, in the future. Uh, like for uh, if, uh, we already talked about that uh, for the next uh, generation of the Web Builder. Okay, but for now, uh, we don't have specific things to 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 either modify that or or handle that. Okay. All right. Uh, so if you guys have oh, this I, one. I have yep. one. Um, yep. If you have a, I think it's called a controller widget where there can be a bunch of widgets inside of it. Mm -hmm. um, and in the mobile mode, I just want to turn off a bunch of them. Uh -huh. And I haven't found an easy way of doing that. Uh, okay. Uh, that's actually, actually is very easy. So uh, there's one property I, f I didn't mention, which is, uh, you know, in the mobile layout, uh, you can define the position, properties, whatever, for each individual widget. And uh, at the same level of the position property, there's another property called is visible. So you can set it to false in, within mobile layout. So within mobile layout, that widget will be hidden. But is, does that work in the controller one? Like if it's... Uh, yeah, so because... Like, con yeah, controller is reading uh, the widget uh, configurations from the widget pool. So what you do is you turn off the visibility for the widgets within widget pool. So it will be mobile layout that within it, uh, you have the, the widget pool section that within it, you, you define the visibility for, for the widget in, the, in it. Uh, I can show you maybe yeah. after this. Like and the, and yeah. similarly for the pop-up, mm -hmm. I think I might have missed, you had something about the pop-up at the end that you went through fast, but, uh -huh. um, in the normal pop-up, there's all these things that can happen and all those, you know, feature actions. Mm -hmm. But in the mobile, I want to disable all that. Uh, personally, I haven't tried that uh, f for feature actions um, because a uh, pop-up is a special case because it's not really a part of the web builder. Uh, it's, it's come like from the the S3 RGS API. So, I mean, definitely you can do that by utilizing that is run in mobile property. And, uh, but first you need to get the, in, the instance of the mobile pop-up from the map. And then from there you can uh, do some customized JavaScript, if yeah, that makes sense. It's, it, I found that part to be quite tricky. Yeah, I, I can tell it's, it can be very tricky because it's, uh, that whole part is part of the RGS online. Uh, I mean, I mean RGS API uh, is, is kind of basically, a, um, right, because it is basically handled by the map itself. Uh, if you want, uh, we can sit down and uh, try to figure it out. Cool. Okay, I think that's it. And if you have any questions, feel free to come to the Web Builder booth. And uh, for example, like we can sit down and uh, talk more. All right, thank you.